The old centre of Durham, with its magnificent cathedral perched high above the River Weir, is a never-to-be-forgotten site. Now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the old city centre boasts 600 listed buildings, including Crook Hall, Kingsgate Bridge, Elvet Bridge and the Town Hall. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 things to do in Durham, and just wait till you see what's at number 1, something you may not even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides and make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So now let's cut to the chase. At 10, take the kids to Wharton Park. Covering 10 acres, Wharton Park is the perfect place to visit if you're traveling with kids in need of letting off some steam. Located just a short distance from Durham Cathedral and the city's busy train station, Wharton Park offers a variety of activities for families to enjoy. Established in the mid-18th century, its setting on a hill makes it the perfect vantage spot to watch trains come and go, including historic locos and rolling stock as they trundle over the famous Durham Viaduct. It's also a great place to take photos of the cathedral and other city landmarks, even more fun when accompanied by a picnic. For the best views, look out for the mock battlements. Here you'll find a number of well-placed viewing platforms. The amphitheatre here is also great to photograph, especially when in use. Check out the facility's website for details of performances, concerts and other events. There's also a fun mini race track where the kids can take control of their very own electric car. Fun educational workshops for young and old alike are also offered. At 9, Durham Town Hall. The interior of the Grade 2 listed Durham Town Hall is well worth taking a peek at. Its modest glass-fronted reception gallery hides a variety of period rooms, including the dramatic main hall with its stained glass windows and hammer beam oak roof. Also worth seeing is the Crush Hall. Here you'll find some fascinating memorabilia regarding the life of Count Borowolaski. Just 39 inches tall, the once famous Count died in 1837 at age 98. That's a grand age for 39 inches. Next up at 8, take a trip to the past at Beamish, the Living Museum of the North. This fantastic living museum, set in 300 acres of beautiful countryside just 10 miles outside Durham, offers a look into the lives of those who lived in the area during the Georgian, Victorian and Edwardian eras. Costumed characters bring the displays to life and help tell the amazing story of how the Industrial Revolution transformed the region. Incredibly, all the buildings at Beamish were brought brick by brick from across Durham County and rebuilt on site. Beamish also hosts numerous exciting events, including the Great North Festival of Transport, a Georgian Fair and the Great North Festival of Agriculture. And if you expect to make a day of it, you certainly should, you can enjoy a snack or meal at any one of the many different eateries at Beamish, along with some great shopping opportunities. At 7, Durham Museum and Heritage Centre. The Durham Museum and Heritage Centre contains many informative and educational exhibitions relating to the town's rich heritage. Housed in a medieval church, it includes excellent audiovisual shows, brass rubbings and a collection of beautiful stained glass windows. Another great place to gather useful information about the city's past is the World Heritage Site Visitor Centre. Here you'll find a variety of displays and exhibits relating the story behind the city's many historic buildings through film and interactive displays. At 6, Durham University Botanic Garden. Occupying a 25-acre site just south of Durham City, Durham University Botanic Garden is well worth a visit. In addition to its many year-round programs and events, highlights include numerous plant collections from around the world, including China and South Africa. There's also a lovely woodland garden, an alpine garden and a bamboo grove to explore. The garden's impressive glass houses are also worth checking out. These include collections of tropical rainforest plants, desert plants and more familiar plants from the Mediterranean. Also interesting are the displays of tropical bugs, stick insects, scorpions and tarantulas, so great for arachnophobics. Afterwards, pop into the visitor centre with its cafe and gift shop. Other notable gardens worthy of a visit are the English gardens at 13th century Crook Hall, just a short walk from the cathedral. Tours and talks are available and are highly recommended.
at 5 Oriental Museum. The University of Durham's Oriental Museum on Elvet Hill, just a short distance from the old city centre, has excellent art and archaeological collections from the Near and Far East. All of the major Eastern cultures and periods are represented, from ancient Egypt and India to Tibet, China and Japan. Highlights include ancient pottery and jewellery, stone sculptures and antique arms and armour. If possible, try to time your trip to coincide with one of the museum's special touch tours, when visitors are given the unique opportunity to handle some of their most precious artefacts. Don't drop it. A shop and cafe are located on site for those wanting to extend their stay, and be sure to check the museum's website for news of visiting, touring exhibits and special events. And now at four, Durham University Museum of Archaeology. The Museum of Archaeology, located in Durham University's Palace Green Library, houses finds from the Roman, Anglo-Saxon and Norman periods. The museum also boasts a sizeable collection of medieval artefacts, many of them discovered in the old city centre during major archaeological digs in the late 20th century. The library is also home to the university's special collections, archives and early printed books, including more than 70,000 volumes printed before 1850. Entry to the museum and library are free, as is admission to its lectures and educational programming. At 3. Durham Castle Built as a fortress by the Earl of Northumberland in 1072, Durham Castle, also part of the Durham UNESCO World Heritage Site, was presented by William the Conqueror to the city's Prince Bishops. The most interesting rooms are the Norman Chapel, with its delightful carved archaic capitals, the large 14th century dining hall, the 16th century chapel and 17th century black stairs complete with pineapple carvings. The castle is also home to University College, the founding college of Durham University. More than 100 students live here, making this a truly unique building with more than 900 years of living history. For a truly memorable experience, look into availing yourself of the castle's unique B&B stays during student vacations only. Tours of the castle are included with your stay. And now at two, the treasures of St Cuthbert. Located in a part of Durham Cathedral that once served as a monk's dormitory, the treasures of St Cuthbert include a variety of the attraction's most important collections and relics, representing more than 900 years of history. Its oldest exhibits are the 7th century wooden coffin of St Cuthbert, a silver plate collection that once belonged to the Prince Bishops of Durham, and numerous ancient books. Of special interest is the Conyers Falchion, an ancient sword used by Sir John Conyers to kill the legendary Sockburn Worm. These days, the only action the sword sees is when it's presented to each new Bishop of Durham upon entering the diocese at Croft Bridge for the first time. The monk's quarters are themselves well worth seeing. A highlight is the monk's kitchen, which features a remarkably well-preserved octagonal ceiling and no less than eight fireplaces. Also of interest are the fascinating displays depicting the lives of the monks. This popular tourist attraction also houses the original knocker used by sanctuary seekers in medieval times, a replica of which now graces the cathedral's main door. And finally, at one, take a guided tour of Durham Cathedral. Durham Cathedral, or to give it its full title, the Cathedral Church of Christ, Blessed Mary the Virgin and St Cuthbert of Durham, is famous for its beautiful British Romanesque style architecture. Whether approached from the narrow streets of the Old City across Palace Green or from the banks of the River Weir over Prebens Bridge, this UNESCO World Heritage Site is truly awe-inspiring. Completed between 1093 and 1133 with a few 15th century flourishes, the building is entered by the 12th century northwest door, once used by fugitives seeking sanctuary. Inside, visitors will be faced with many wonderful sights to explore. Highlights include the graceful Galilee Chapel, the Norman nave with its massive piers and columns, as well as the cathedral tower. It's a 325 step climb to the top, so be prepared for a little exertion. The cathedral also boasts the most intact set of medieval claustral buildings in the UK, including the 14th century cloister featured in the first Harry Potter film. 
Guided tours of Durham Cathedral are offered daily and take one and a quarter hours. The Cathedral also has an excellent adult learning program for visitors wanting to know more about the area's history and includes lectures, workshops and tours of the surrounding woods and riverbanks. The Cathedral Library and Archive is also available to those interested in specific aspects of the Cathedral's history. For those wanting to linger, a restaurant and gift shop are located on the premises. And there you have the top things to see and do in Durham. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. Check out more videos on the English tourist attractions in our English travel guide playlist. That's all for now. Until next time.